In this video, I see what it takes to stay cool. Around 34 watts. I enjoy chilling out when... Switch it on now. And I really don't want you stranded with a flat battery. It's Da Vinci time. Further to the video that's currently being suggested in the top corner now, and where I said this, and I'm currently testing this with other power stations to get an idea of how long it runs and how well it performs. We take our first look at the Alpicool C15 compressor fridge and how it got on. So the fridge that you see in this video is the same as the one that you can get on Amazon, but it was purchased from AliExpress, so some of the bits that come with it are slightly different, but they'll be pointed out in the video. Anyway, enough chat, let's go. So when you empty the box, this is what you're left with. So starting off over here with the user manual, and as you can see, it's not actually in English, but what it does have is diagrams and uh, pictures in there, which makes it fairly easy to follow, but you might need to use Google Translate on this to find out what it actually means. And there's also a link to their website down there, which I'll also put in the description below. And it also has a handy uh, QR code on the front here to go straight to their website to pick up the most appropriate app for your device. So that's actually really handy and I use that straight out of the box. So over here we have a mains adapter. So we've got the DC output here which gives about 14.5 volts. And there's the uh, mains plug adapter and this is one of those two pin kind. And they do throw in one of these uh, three pin uh, adapters here for UK sockets if you're in the UK. So that works quite well on that. And the other lead that they throw in here as well is your one for your cigarette lighter output in your vehicle or on your portable power station. So you just plug that in there and there's your uh, connector there to go straight into the Alpicool. So that's what you get in the box. Right, it's time for a quick look round now. So let's start off here on the front with this cooling vent. Now it's important to remember to keep these clear, these cooling vents, because they keep the components inside, including the compressor, cool while this thing is actually running. So it's important to remember that fact. So I'm just gonna move it round now, and what you will notice is when this is unloaded that it will be a bit heavier on the compressor side, which is this side. So I'm just gonna flip that round now. So here's your one and only input. So this is a DC input which can take 12 or 24 volts. And as you can see, there's another cooling vent there and you might even be able to see the compressor inside. Nice molded handle there again. That works well when this thing is unloaded or fully loaded. So let's go around to the back. And as you can see, we've got another cooling vent there. So again, keep these clear so this remains cool while it's running. So nothing more to talk about on the back. And the other side, again, we've got another moulded handle, which is good. Right, so let's flip that up now. And as you can see here, we've got the display and the control panel here. And it also has a little USB port there as well, which is handy, which I've used quite a bit on this, as you can tell, by this rubber cover. So again, I'll go into the operation of this later on in this video. So here's the main lid itself. So I'm just going to flip that up now. So I'm hoping that's visible. There we go. So that's the internal part of the fridge. So this is obviously a fridge or it can go into a freezer, but it's only a single compartment. So you can't actually use this like you can on some of the larger models. It's either a fridge or it's a freezer or any temperature you wish to put in there. And then that just clips down like that and then that's in place. So that concludes the quick tour. So powering the LP cool from the mains is really as easy as it would seem. Just plug it into a socket and you get a little green light on the uh, power brick there. And then just plug the DC uh, output into the input on the LP cool. And then you should hear it kick into life. There's a beep. And the, I'm hoping you can hear that off my mic at the moment. The uh, compressor has kicked into action. So it's not that loud either, just like a small fridge in any room. So the other way to power the Alpicool is direct from DC. 
So this is the cable that comes with it and this plugs straight into the cigarette lighter output and this plugs straight into the unit. But what I have found with this particular unit is the fact that you have voltage ranges on it. So you can actually use this with uh, power stations for example or other 12 volt outputs that aren't regulated and may drop a little lower. But I do not recommend doing that in a vehicle because if you're running this from the starting battery and the engine isn't running you might leave yourself stranded with a flat battery. So that's my only word of caution on that front. So I'm just going to plug this into one of the smaller ones now, just to show you that these work with small uh, power stations as well. So I've got my uh, little Jackery here. So this is the Explorer 240. And this has a regulated 12 volt output. So I'm just going to plug that in there now. That's actually switched on. I'm just going to plug this in now, just to show you that it starts the kick up of the uh, compressor. And you heard the beep. A little judder as that started up now. And I think we've got some uh, watts being used on there at the moment at kick up, so let's just let that settle down. So that's settled down around 34 watts. So I'm just going to flip over to one of my other smaller units now just to show you that. Right, time for another quick test now just to show you on a smaller power station or solar generator how useful it is having the adjustable voltage uh, input ranges on the Alpicor is. So this is my 372 watt hour from All Powers, and you can still get this today, but it's only in 288 watt hour version, meaning the fact that this is essentially the same unit, but with just less battery capacity. So this doesn't have a regulated uh, 12 volt output or cigarette lighter socket here, which means that as the charge of this battery goes down, so does the voltage at this port. So this is where this adaptable voltage range comes in really handy with the Alpicol. So I'm just going to plug this in now and we'll see what that kicks up to. So I'm just going to switch that on now. So I've heard the beep come on and I'm sorry this is a very uh, dim display. But that's just kicking into action now. And again it's gone the similar to the uh, 240 Explorer into the mid 30s. So again it's using about the same amount of power. So it's in the 30 watt range. So again, that just shows you that it can run from smaller units as well. And I'll go into more details on the uh, adaptable voltage range later on in the video. Right, time for a look at the control panel now. So you've got four main buttons on there. So you've got your power button, you've got your settings button, and you've got your plus and minus buttons there for changing values. You've got the USB port as well, which I've already shown you. So if we just switch it on now. Okay, so the display lights up and you get a little beep confirmation there. So in the top corner there, you've got a little Bluetooth symbol because this is the Bluetooth model, which means you can use it with the app. So you've got the current temperature of the fridge there, which is five degrees C. You've got a little battery symbol there. You've also got the current voltage, which is being supplied by the battery. And I'm currently using the Jackery Explorer 500 for this. Uh, you've also got an H there which goes to medium and low, so that's high, medium and low, and that's the battery protect, which I'm just going to put up on screen now what the values are for each of those settings. And you've also got an eco illuminated there and it also goes into max mode as well which puts the uh, compressor into full power mode which means you can freeze things or you can bring the temperature of the fridge down really quickly just like a standard domestic fridge. So I'm going to show you how to change the settings on the panel and how easy that is. And first and foremost is the current temperature of the fridge which is 5 degrees C. So I'm going to change that down to say I think minus 2. So once you've set your temperature, it'll flash until it's set. And then when it stops flashing, it will now be set, even though it's showing the current temperature of the fridge. So the compressor will stay on now, which it's just kicked in. And as you can see, the voltage has dropped, which you'd expect from the battery at the moment. And then once it reaches that minus two, then the compressor will turn off and then the battery voltage there again will recover. So the other thing I'm going to show you as well, if we want to make sure that that gets down to that temperature a lot quicker, we can actually change it from eco mode to max, which switches the compressor up. Obviously it uses more energy as well. 
Uh, so far I've seen it use anywhere between about sort of eight and 12 watts additional from what it runs in normal eco mode. But obviously it will get down to that temperature much quicker. And to change those two, all you need to do is push the settings button once, and then once again, and then once that stopped flashing on there, that will go into max mode, which means it will get to the desired temperature a lot faster. So while that's doing that, what else you can do is you can also change the battery protection settings. So again, we've got the high, medium and low. And to change those particular settings there, you just need to hold down the settings button here until it starts flashing. And it started flashing and then just use the same button again to change it to what uh, level of battery protection you need, depending on the type of battery you're using. So you can get to additional settings via the panel that are available in the app. And to do that, it needs to be in standby or off mode. And then you just push and hold down the settings button for a few seconds and it will wake up. And now it shows these menu items that are starting with the letter E, going all the way up to, I think it's E9, there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the setting E5, which will actually change the uh, temperature display from Celsius to Fahrenheit. So you push the button there and it's flashing for Celsius and it's now flashing in Fahrenheit. So I'm going to let that go back to sleep and then switch it on. And you'll see that the temperature setting is now shown as 41 Fahrenheit. So that's just an easy way that you can change it. But I'm show you how you can access all those configuration settings in the app itself. So I've just opened up the app on my mobile as you can see and the first thing we need to do is just start scanning for the fridge. So I'm going to scan and it's found the Da Vinci fridge so I'm going to click on that now. So even though the display on the fridge is actually off at the moment it's still in standby because power is connected. So you get this screen that comes up so it starts off and gives you battery capacity obviously and voltage along the top and the current temperature of the fridge which is 8 degrees Celsius. So what I'm going to do first off is I'm just going to switch it on so we've got the panel on as well in the video. So I've just powered that on now and as you can see it's now come on and displaying the same information that's on the mobile. So you can actually just change the temperature from this uh, mobile quite easily on the slidey scale there. You can slide it up and slide it down and you can also use the up and down arrows which is above and below the current temperature in the middle of the screen. So if you look along the bottom there, you've got a voltage setting, which is the battery protect mode. So if you just tap on those, and you can change those quite easily from high to medium to low. I'm going to put it back up to high. And next one to that, you've got the eco setting. So at the moment, it's showing eco on the display. So I'm going to put it into max setting by just pressing that, which turns off the eco mode. So it's going to go into high power for the compressor. You've also got a little lock feature here which just locks the front panel on the fridge. So if you push that it stops making changes to any of the settings. So that it clicks but nothing happens. So I'm going to remove that lock there. And then you've got the unpairing symbol there which means that you can just unpair the fridge and go through that process that I showed you when I opened the app in the first place. So now for the menu. So we start off in the top left hand corner. So if you just press that one there. You've got a couple of options there, which is my fridge, and I'll just click on that, and it's just saying that Da Vinci one is currently connected. And then the one below that, go back into that, it's just a user manual, so it just shows you about the Bluetooth pairing. If we scroll across there, and it gives you the information about that, and again, to start scanning the fridge if it's not picking yours up. And then the other corner, which is the right-hand corner, which is another settings little button there, so I'm just going to push that now. And then that brings up all these other settings which I was showing you earlier in the E1 to E9 menu you can access via the uh, main panel. So you can change things quite easily in here and I won't go through all of these but you can just click on it to change it. Uh, for example, I'm going to just change the uh, temperature unit there from Fahrenheit uh, back to Celsius again. So you just click on that. You can also change the max uh, settings in temperature and minimum temperature as well. 
So again, you can just click on that there and you can just scroll up or down to decide what you want the max temperature to be. So for example, if you only wanted to go up to seven as a maximum, and then also the minimum temperature here, you just wanna make sure that that stays at a different temperature. So I'm gonna go all the way down to only about minus uh, two on that one. So again, this is what you can access using the uh, front panel as well in the E menu. And the other things really speak for themselves. You can rename it in there. And again, I can rename it to something else. You can also reset the fridge as well, back to factory settings. In the about section, you've obviously got the Alpicall website there and contact information as well as that. And the advanced settings. So that's a quick run round of the app. So when it comes to powering the Alpicool off of a portable power station, solar generator or just a 12 volt battery, how much runtime can you expect before you need to recharge? Now I did some testing in the summer on the smaller units I have in terms of capacity or overall available watt hours just to see what kind of runtime I would get. And I'm just going to post those stats up on screen now. But before I do, I just want to be clear that this is based on ambient temperature and obviously the temperature you've got the fridge set to because if it's gonna be really warm and you want it in freezer mode, it's obviously gonna use a lot more power because the compressor will be on for a lot longer. So I just wanna make that clear, but here are the stats. So when it comes to loading up the Alpicor, and with this being the smallest in the range at 15 litres capacity, I just wanted to give you an idea of how much you could get in there using cans and bottles. So as you can see, we've got different sized cans in there at the moment. And when it comes to putting in larger bottles, such as wine bottles or sparkling fruit juice bottles, for example, which I've got one here actually. So if you put that in there like so, that represents a problem because you can't actually get the lid shut because it's not quite deep enough. But that's easily solved with sealed bottles because you can just lay them on the side and rearrange the contents in here to make sure you get that lid closed and snap shut because if it snaps shut then that keeps your temperature in the right place for you. But the problems may come if you use milk. So we use a lot of milk in our household. And this is a standard two litre UK milk bottle here. And again it suffers from the same issue. But the problem with these lids is they're not very well sealed so you can't reseal them very well. So if I was to lay that down now, especially if I'm on the move in my car, then that's going to leak out inside. So what you might need to do in this case is actually consider one of the larger units in this range. So maybe the C20 or above. But I just wanted to cover that off just to give you a rough idea of what this thing can hold. So what's it like living with and using the Alpico on a regular basis? Well since I got this I've run a number of tests and used it in different scenarios and it just does what it says on the tin, no fuss, no hassle. This includes a continuous run test of just over two months during the summer where all I powered it with was solar generators, portable power stations and 12 volt lithium ion phosphate batteries you might have seen some of the reviews on this channel and they were all charged using solar power, so it effectively cost me nothing to run it for the whole period. But one point of note on this, where this isn't like a normal domestic fridge is the fact it doesn't come with a drain built in to stop condensation building up on the inside. So it did involve me actually wiping it out on several occasions just to make sure that there wasn't a build up inside and that the contents weren't too wet when they came out. Something else that worked well during the summer was using it as a freezer. So while on walks, having picnics or traveling in the car, we could have ice, ice cold drinks to the point they were frozen and even ice cream. And what better way to finish off a picnic in the summer sun than having an ice cream? 
So I'm just going to put up a picture on screen now showing you the typical setup in the boot of my car. So the Alpi Core would be powered by the portable power station or solar generator. In this case, it was the Jacker Explorer 500 and that's connected to the uh, cigarette lighter output. So it charges from the vehicle while it's on the move or the engine is on. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend doing it off the starting battery while the engine is off. And uh, this worked really well, particularly when we would park up and go off on walks because we could leave uh, the fridge running because it would be running off of, uh, in this case, the Jackery Explorer. And then when we got back, then we could actually dig into our ice creams. And that really topped off the walks really nicely during the summer months. So how's the Alpicool been so far? Well, it's done exactly what I've needed it to do. And it's even given me that little bit of extra capacity from my normal domestic fridge freezer so that I can put extra bits and pieces in there when needed if that's getting a bit full. So like around Christmas time, if I want to store drinks and that, and I can run it for a long time. And if the sun's been shining, it costs me absolutely nothing to run. And even if I was to connect it to the mains, it still wouldn't use that much in electricity terms. So overall for me, it's been a great experience so far. And if you have any questions, just pop them in the section below and I'll see if I can answer them for you. We hope you liked our video. All the links you'll need will be in the description below. Please like, share, subscribe and hit the bell icon. And stay tuned to Dad Vinci.